آداب سب سے پہلے تو میں آپ سب کا ویلکم کرتا ہوں اور استقبال کرتا ہوں آج اس ورک شاپ میں جو فیکٹ چیکنگ پر ہے مس انفارمیشن پر ہے ہمارے گیسٹ چیف گیسٹ گیسٹ آف آنر اور آنریبل بھائی شانسر صاحب سب تشریف لا چکے ہیں میں آپ سب کا استقبال کرتا ہوں خیر مقدم کرتا ہوں ناؤ آئی ریکویسٹ آور ڈگنیٹریز پلیز کم آن اینڈ ڈائس تالیوں سے استقبال کریں ہمارے گیسٹ کا ہمارے چیف گیسٹ مسٹر ڈیوڈ موئر پبلک افیئر آفیسر یو ایس کاؤنسلیٹ حیدرآباد ہماری گیسٹ آف آنر بہت ہی رناؤنڈ آئی پی ایس آفیسر میڈم مسز سمتی ڈی آئی جی وومن سیفٹی تلنگانہ پروفیسر اسٹیونسن صاحب ڈین اینڈ ہیڈ ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ماس کمیونیکیشن جرنلزم عثمانیہ یونیورسٹی حیدرآباد پلیز پروفیسر احتشام احمد صاحب now i welcome you all in this program i would like to share you that uh, this workshop is for urdu journalist yeah. uh, this workshop is for urdu journalist and urdu medium journalism student and this is organized by department of mass communication journalism maulana azad urdu university in collaboration with us consulate general hyderabad and ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ماس کمیونیکیشن عثمانیہ یونیورسٹی حیدرآباد میں اب اپنے مہمانوں کا استقبال کرتے ہوئے اپنے وائی شانسر صاحب سے درخواست کروں گا کہ ہمارے مہمانوں کا استقبال کریں اپنے اسٹوڈنٹ نوشین فاطمہ سے درخواست کروں گا کہ آج جو ہمارے چیف گیسٹ ہیں جناب ڈیوڈ موئر صاحب کی خدمت میں ہدیہ گل پیش کریں گے محمد احمد ڈیوڈ موئر صاحب پبلک افیئر آفیسر یو ایس کاؤنسلیٹ حیدرآباد ہماری گیسٹ آف آنر میڈم سومتی جی کی خدمت میں ہدیہ گل پیش کریں گے وائس چانسلر صاحب ایک مومنٹو اور شال بھی ہے تالیوں سے استقبال کریں ہمارے گیسٹ کا چیف گیسٹ صاحب کا میں وی سی صاحب کو پھر زحمت دیتا ہوں ہماری تلنگانہ کی بہت ہی تیز ترار آئی پی ایس آفیسر ڈی آئی جی وومن سیفٹی میڈم شریمتی سمتی جی کی خدمت میں ہدیہ گل پیش کریں میں سر سے ایک بار اور ریکویسٹ کروں گا کہ ہماری گیسٹ امم نور جو گوگل کی گوگل انیشیٹیو کی طرف سے ریسورس پرسن ہیں سر کو میں زحمت دوں گا امم نور میڈم کے لیے بھی امم نور بہت ہی ینگ اور ڈائنامک جرنلسٹ ہیں جو گوگل انیشیٹیو کی طرف سے فیکٹ چیکر ہیں ریسورس پرسن ہیں آج ہماری ہمارے آج کے اس پروگرام میں ایک بہت ہی خاص گیسٹ جو تشریف لائے ہیں باہر سے جناب کرشنا ساستری پنڈیالا جی بھی ہمارے درمیان تشریف رکھتے ہیں ابھی شاید نہیں پہنچ پائے ہیں میں سر سے درخواست کروں گا کہ جناب ایم اے ماجد صاحب کی خدمت میں بھی ہدیہ گل پیش کریں ایم اے ماجد صاحب اردو ورکنگ جرنلسٹ فیڈریشن کے پریزیڈنٹ ہیں نہیں آئیے آئیے سر یہ ماجد صاحب پریس کونسل آف انڈیا کے ممبر رہ چکے ہیں بہت ہی سینئر صحافی ہیں اردو کے سدھاکر ریڈی جی شاید ابھی نہیں آئے میں پروفیسر احتشام صاحب سے درخواست کروں گا ہاں اسٹیمینشن صاحب وی سی صاحب کو پھر ایک بار زحمت دوں گا ہمارے درمیان ماس کوم کے بہت ہی سینئر پروفیسر پروفیسر اسٹیمینشن سر جو ڈین ہے عثمانی آرٹس کالج کے اور ہیڈ ہیں ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ماس کمیونیکیشن جرنلزم عثمانی یونیورسٹی کے سر کی خدمت میں ہدیہ گل پیش کریں شال اور مومنٹو پیش کریں میں سر سے درخواست کرتا ہوں
स्टेवेंशन सर उस्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी के जो मीडिया सेंटर के डायरेक्टर रह चुके हैं मैं प्रोफेसर एहतम साहब से दरखास्त करूंगा कि आखिर में आ, हमारे हर दिल अजीज़ वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर एनुल हसन साहब की खिदमत में भी हदिय गुल पेश करें शॉल और एक मोमेंटो पेश करें और एक तरह से ये करके हम सर का शुक्रिया अदा करेंगे ताकि जिनकी वजह से हम ये सब प्रोग्राम कर पा रहे हैं जिनकी हौसला अफजाई की वजह से प्रोफेसर एहतम अहमद खान साहब से दरखास्त करूँगा मैं वी साहब से दरखास्त करूँगा कि सर ये छोटा सा एक जो बहुत शुक्रिया सर आ, मैं बहुत आ, ब्रीफ में बताता चलूं कि ये बहुत ही तारीखी मौक बहुत तारीखी दिन है जब दुनिया की पहली उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी उस्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी और हिंदुस्तान की वाद सेंट्रल उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी मौलाना आज़ाद उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी दोनों के मास कम्युनिकेशन डिपार्टमेंट एक साथ कोलेबरेट करके यूएस काउंसलेट जनरल के ताउन से ये प्रोग्राम कर पा रहे हैं और ये बहुत ही अहम मौजू है आज का ज़माना चूँकि हम सब जानते हैं हम कहते हैं इन्फॉर्मेशन एज है दिस इज़ एज ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन और आज चारों तरफ इन्फॉर्मेशन ही इन्फॉर्मेशन हमारी तरफ फैल रहा है तैर रहा है ऐसे में ये जानना बहुत अहम है कि कौन सा इन्फॉर्मेशन मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन है कौन सा डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन है और कौन सा ट्रू इन्फॉर्मेशन है इन्हीं मौजू पे तेलंगाना भर के आ, मुझे लगता है सत्ताईस जर्नलिस्ट ट्वेंटी सेवन जर्नलिस्ट हैं वर्किंग जर्नलिस्ट हैं और जर्नलिज्म के स्टूडेंट जो मासूम डिपार्टमेंट के हैं दोनों लोगों के आ, के लिए ये वर्कशॉप ऑर्गेनाइज किया जा रहा है ये पहले से भी चल रहा है और आज इसका एक अहम दिन है जब एक दिन का ये वर्कशॉप किया जा रहा है मैं आ, Now I would like to invite Professor K. Stevenson, sir, who is a project director and head department of journalism, Usmania University, to enlighten us about this project, which is about to uh, misinformation and disinformation. Please, taliyon se istakbal karein, Professor Stevenson, sir. A very good morning to all of you. respected professor sayed ainul hasan sir honorable vice chancellor urdu university guest of honor shrimati b sumati iaps of uh, today's chief guest uh, mr david moyer us consulate general hyderabad uh, mr krishna shastri probably he is on his way ms umam noor uh, the guest faculty and uh, fact checker from delhi Sudhakar Reddy, I don't think uh, he has yet arrived. Uh, Mr. M. A. Majid Sab uh, of the Telangana Urdu Journalists Association, uh, my dear friend uh, Basit, officials from the U.S. Consulate General Hyderabad, officials from Urdu University, research scholars, participants, students of mass communication and journalism, and other staff members. well today i think is a very historic day historic in several senses i would say this with all authority because i think this is the first time ever urdu university is hosting a workshop for journalists for journalists and journalism students it is historic in the sense that this workshop is the first of its kind for urdu journalists okay for urdu university it is a special event for urdu journalists across telangana it's a special event that's why i would say that it is a very historic and uh, i would uh, rather give credit to mr david moyer uh, who is the chief guest of today's function who has been a very strong votary of uh, uh, empowering journalists in the regional media with regard to fact checking skills i think it was he who was instrumental in trying to push the case okay to train journalists i'll try to be very brief uh the journey started in 2021 september when we mooted this proposal to conduct this training program on countering disinformation for telugu television journalists 
I think we had a fairly successful run. We had about 30, 35 Telugu television journalists who were trained over 120 sessions spread over nine months. We had nearly about 45 topics which were actually debated, discussed, practiced by students, assignments submitted, and workshops which were conducted both offline and online. Today, I would proudly say that, I, <clears throat> that uh, the impact of this program has been infectious in the sense that today there is a transformation which is taking place in newsrooms in the Telugu media houses. Okay, people who have gone through this course have actually started mentoring their colleagues on fact-checking. Hitherto, probably this was a neglected area, but today when I interact with some of these participants who have gone through this training program, I think they are mentoring others, number one. Number two, some of them have already become certified trainers of Google, okay? And they are training students across journalism colleges. This is the second out major outcome. The third outcome is the material which was circulated. I think it is amplifying among Telugu journalists and they are able to at least sensitize themselves on what is to be done just in case there is misinformation creeping into the mainstream media, from the mainstream media into all other tele uh, uh, television platforms. I think the, there are several different individuals who have started their own websites or digital platforms, even in districts, okay, trying to verify information and put out the right kind of information. I think uh, <coughs> I would not hesitate to say that this project came at the right time because today we carry news in our pockets, okay? Whether it is true or untrue, we don't know. Day in and day out, we, are, we all keep getting this information, okay? And there is no escaping this fact. Research tells us that, you know, lies travel 1,500 times faster than truth. It's not my statement, okay? It is research which is saying this. Okay, so in this, in this context of disinformation, misinformation, this workshop was conceived. Let me also point out that uh, the program, which ran for nine months, started off with a baseline survey. We initially tested, I think even the Urdu journalists who are now going, this, going through this program, they have been subjected to a diagnostic survey where we made some preliminary assessment as to what is their understanding of what is disinformation, misinformation. So we have that baseline survey, which the results are there. Then even as the program has progressed, so far we have had nearly about 35 classes offline, online, okay? And even uh, uh, real-time assessment uh, through the WhatsApp group. So <clears throat> there is this continuous monitoring of participants which is taking place now, as in the past. Uh, I think participants are also being given feedback about their exercises and there is constant pushing of participants to submit their assignments so that we achieve the objective, objective of reskilling, upskilling and also skilling. I think in this context we have to remember this, the primary objective of the pro project is to skill people, okay, to impart skills Okay, that's why we have been very, very serious about attendance. Okay, every time someone enters into the Google news, sorry, into the Zoom uh, sessions, their attendance is marked. We also know how much time each participant is spending in the Zoom session, whether he is there or whether he is walking out. That also is monitored. Okay, so this is done with a larger objective of empowering and uh, forming a strong network of fact checkers in Urdu. Okay, we have already had this network of Telugu fact checkers, which is vibrant now. But we would like to see this group also emerging as as robust as the Telugu group, trying to cross check information, verify information, use all the tools and techniques which have been imparted during the offline and online sessions. I would have left my discussion for my dear friend Sudhakar Reddy, if he's around, to have uh, you know, briefed you about 
the nature of topics and all, but uh, since he's probably on his way, and he is one person, I think, uh, who has been playing a very sheet anchor's role in the entire project, whether it is Telugu as well as Urdu, okay? He is the senior editor of uh, Investigations, Times of India. He's a master trainer. Uh, he has traveled widely of about 18 to 20 countries, Recip recipient of several scholarships. Okay, he is one of the three members who is uh, uh, an evaluator in the International Fact-Checking Network Group. I think uh, he may join us shortly. Uh, but uh, the topics which uh, are included here include audio, video, verification, geolocation, tweeting, okay, uh, way back information, uh, way back machine, uh, <clears throat> how to prevent disinformation creeping into the other platforms from the mainstream media. So I think the variety of topics and the resource persons, I think that is something which is very, very crucial. Okay, we have brought the best of resource persons, whether it is for Telugu or for Urdu. Okay, uh, we made sure that we had people from English background, from Urdu background also, so that there is some kind of a real engagement of the trainer with the tr trainees. Uh, <clears throat> I wish and hope that the today entire training program, uh, including this session and uh, the forthcoming offline session, which we are likely to have in the near future, will really empower all these participants. Okay, we don't want our effort to just go waste. We would like all people all the participants to really engage with the technology because this is something where you'll have to constantly engage yourself with technology. Otherwise, we lose track. I mean, I can tell you out of my experience, okay? When we lose, when we don't engage with technology, I, I'm sure we'll be losing skills. My humble submission to all the participants is that please, because these are all technical things. I'm sure all of you, you would vouch for it. There are so many technical aspects which have been discussed and we have been successful in bringing out a small booklet in Urdu, which will be released by Mr. David Meyer shortly. Uh, that is to just help you to, you know, access these two tools and follow certain procedures while you are fact-checking. Another submission is wherever you are, okay, whether it's a media organization or if you are running a social media platform, I think you should all make efforts to spread this word. Okay, about fact-checking, the importance of fact-checking. Okay, because today in this ecos disinformation ecosystem, I think we are threatened, our de democracies are threatened. So with these few words, I'll stop here, but before I close, uh, let me also mention that, sir, this 38-member group also has students from the journalism department here. Okay, we also made sure that we have uh, 30, over 30% 30 representation of women as mandated by the U.S. Consulate. Thank you very much. I wish that this today's workshop will be a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to share that this is not the first time when we are going to organize a workshop for Urdu medium journalist, our Urdu <coughs> Uh, journalist, we have organized so many workshops, but this is the first time when we are collaborating with uh, Usmani University Department of Mass Communication. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to invite Sudhakar. Sudhakar ji? No. Okay. So that, uh, our next speaker, Mr. Sudhakar ji, is on the way. I think uh, he may uh, let her join. Now I would like to. Uh, before I would like to invite. Our popular IPS officer, Srimati B. Sumati ji, I would like to share that he is a very young, energetic and dynamic IPS officer. Not only for their, uh, her job, he is very much concerned school dropouts. When I Facebook profile, ma'am ka social media profile, so school dropouts are very concerned for social issues, for small issues, is very concerned for social issues. Abhi ma'am, women safety uh, jo wing hai, government of Telangana ka, uski uh, DIG hai, lekin uske pehle ma'am ne bohat sare wing mein, even government of India ke bohat sare uh, ahem positions pe kaam kiya hai, jis mein sabse ahem mujhe lagta hai, uh, DIG, CID. Uh, 
इस तरह के मैम ने न केवल इन चीज़ों के लिए बल्कि दूसरे बहुत सारे इश्यूज़ पे भी मैम हमेशा एक्टिव रहती हैं बहुत पॉपुलर हैं बहुत सारे फैन फॉलोइंग बहुत है सोशल मीडिया पे तो मुझे लगता है आज ये उर्दू सहाफ़ियों के लिए जो ये वर्कशॉप हो रही है साइबर सिक्योरिटी के लिए मैडम का बहुत कंसर्न रहता है तो बहुत बेहतरीन गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर हैं तालियों से इस्तबाल करें हमारी गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर पॉपुलर आई ऑफिसर मैडम श्रीमती सुमति जी मैं पहले आपके उर्दू को तारीफ करना चाहती हूँ वी आर स्पीकिंग वेरी स्वीटली आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द वाइस चांसलर ऑफ मानू फॉर मेकिंग मी पार्ट ऑफ दिस वन डे वर्कशॉप फॉर उर्दू जर्नलिस्ट ऑन how to deal with disinformation which is a very relevant topic as a senior police officer too as a part of my profession and all the esteemed guests on the on the dais and off the dais especially mr david moyer who has been as it is said by the person who is conducting here that has been main reason for this workshop and this project also for a for spreading awareness on how to avoid and how to deal with the disinformation for all the journalists including telugu and urdu and mujhe ye soch ke itna khushi aa rahi hai ki hyderabad mein to khas kar telangana mein to we have equal number of urdu journalists and focus on urdu journalists and being recognized and being organized in mano is something which is a really welcome step and a professional advancement towards the way the news is being reported in this part of the country i also take uh, pleasure in noting that mr krishna shastri mr sudhakar reddy and of course professor stevenson and now i i see one young journalist from dainik jagran all of you being part of this particular workshop which actually makes it very rich when it comes to learning very rich when it comes to knowing what's happening around through people like me and also when it comes to being as professor stevenson said upskilling yourself reskilling yourself and going up the moment we come out of this particular training or skilling exercises that you are a better journalist when it comes to reporting of course today if you have seen the tweet of elon musk he says <laughs> assume you are always being manipulated see how apt it is in that there will be group of journalists and there is a cartoon which is asking who believes media controls people and everybody is raising hand but actually it is there is a second part of the cartoon which says that the otherwise do you think you are not <laughs> you are being controlled and everybody puts the hands down and the caption goes assume you are always being manipulated so this is the crux of the issue a journalist feels that by reporting in a particular way especially when it is a disinformation definitely he believes or he comes with an idea that you are controlling people with your information or you are manipulating the people with your information but as it is rightly said now with technology do you think that with kind of reporting which you are doing you are really manipulating the people's ideas or the way people are thinking about or assimilating or assessing your news no it's not you please have a belief and one more line i liked and we all know it affects the way the human civilization is getting advanced or progressing i should say not advanced and when i say progressing 
it can be whatever kind of democracy it is, the news we are reporting has a huge impact the way a country, a society or as a world we function when it comes to the basic human functionality, leaving alone the economics part of it, leaving alone the technology part of it, leaving alone the other part of it and second is the way we are putting up the information has a huge psychological impact on the population which I think has to be seriously considered as a part of skilling and we have to use even how AI more than what you put the news. If I put 10, 10 news of disinformation, automatically the my chatbot, chatbot takes the disinformation as the true information. Pretty well being known by the people who are reading that it is an AI generated news piece and definitely it is a piece of disinformation. Otherwise, when I used to be a very conventional news reader, if I read a particular newspaper or if I read a particular piece of news, I used to feel, I used to have an impression only on that particular news channel or only on that particular press clip. But now, all 10 putting disinformation on a particular channel, there is a chance that entire fraternity is being get misled. That's where I take the context of this particular tweet which is put by Elon Musk very, very contextually right. When I said that it is going to impact psychologically in a very heavy way, there are two parts of disinformation. One, we know that the information itself is not right. Then, the menseria that I have to spread false information. It is, I should say, savage-like and it is very inhuman that we are trying to change the mind of a particular reader without any intention of giving a right knowledge to them, right information to them and right analysis to them. Then what is the very purpose of disinformation being spread or information being spread which is neither right nor the intention is right. I think every journalist seriously should question and when it comes to Urdu journalists, I will say certain facts. Most of the people who read Urdu as a news or who watch Urdu as news, not just in India, across the world or mostly who are tech savvy and who watch more on internet than on a conventional means. Hope you all agree. Yes, when I am able to see your news and I am somebody who likes to watch or is watching on a regular basis on internet, don't you think that there is a lot of people who are reporting the same news across the world? Then why do you think that people will not go for a fact check? Absolutely, people will go for a fact check. Only thing is, the rating also. The fact check is going on, number one. And the arm reader, whoever is going through that particular news, will rate that particular agency, what kind of news they are interested in, whether left, right, center or median. The moment I know that you are going on a left side or on a right side or on a median side, I would not like to see your news being a left journalist giving a right piece of information. I would just not even acknowledge that this is an information to be read from a journalist who always reports only left news. I would not like to see the right news at all because I will not even feel that he would have known the, he or she would have known the facts. This is such a serious blow on the very content which journalism is trying to project to the citizens, isn't it? Yes. So what is a solution? Of course, trainings are a solution. Knowing about the technology, whether your own co-journalist has given a proper news, not just at your level. Even at a senior level, when it is reported at all the levels, 
I think the fact checking shall go on by using internet tools. Even the editors should do that. I think even somebody above, there can be a sessions every six months to know, to analyze, and there shall be a workshop with each media room, I and mean each media, um, media channel or media industry when it comes to journalist reporting of news. I think you should have one workshop within your own system where you go for pick up some news and go for the fact checking of that particular six months popular news. I think then we can lay an SOP of how a journalist shall report rather than going for rating of your news through some other means. Don't you think that we can bring up a positive competition between the journalists if we go that way? Yes, we can do it. I think uh, institutions like Manu, even Usmania University can come up with a standard operating procedure where we can evolve, where we can give to the media houses. This is a kind of an SOP which we can give where you go through your own news to know how standardized you are. By giving through the SOP very properly, very the fact checking tools which even a normal journalist who is not very well versed with IT also can use it on his or her own, the reporting channels. Why, why the concern is so much is when it comes to my country, that is our country, we all know that almost 40% of the young population in the entire world is in our country. And the most internet savvy or tech savvy people naturally are youngsters and undoubtedly they are in India or in this part of the world. That itself shows why we can be creators also and we can be annihilators also. So there shall be a balance. The balance is possible by three things. One is raising the young journalists who are going in the mass communication sector to understand that what are the ethos of reporting and how they have evolved over a period of time and coming up with the ideas which they are projecting how they can, they can be better reported. Not that I am a senior and I keep telling that this is the way it has to be reported and I cannot tell sitting in a particular news channel saying that only this kind of news goes so you report this way. No, it's not like that. We have to listen from the young minds because they can analyze better. They are more transparent and they are more tech savvy is what I feel. And if some media house becomes an example to evolve this kind of practices, I think automatically over a period of time, they will become the most sought after news agency. This is number one. And number two, the media houses do require young journalists who have completed mass communication. When I have seen your brochure, you say more than 86% people are being recruited once they have studied from Manu. That itself shows that there is a strength in your subject. But the strength in subject also requires constant updation. That constant updation requires constant tools, constant knowing, trainings like this. And coming across, we shall not be frogs in the well. That is second most important thing which I think Urdu journalists preferably should learn that we, there is a lot of things which we have to learn from English journalists, from local journalists who report vernacular news and also journalists across the world. These are the good practices I think which can be, every media house can evolve to know to see that we can report in a very innovative way, creative way, and also disinformation. See, if I come and say, like an age-old method, being a teacher, if I go and do a corporal punishment, the child will stop learning, isn't it? If I go and say that you do this without even explaining or reasoning, nobody will do it. So the better method is, you have to tell and evolve methods where we can tell it in a very creative way. So even the training session shall not be very boring. They can be full of case studies. They can be full of examples. They can be full of sharing of experiences of the people across the cross sections of the society who deal with and who are impacted by the disinformation as well as people who report disinformation. 
and also the tech savvy people who do the fact checking part or who do with new technologies who work on new technologies to see that the information is reported on a proper way these are the four things is what i feel and i will share one particular example of i think maybe around 12 13 years ago the mailing system picked up then and the first internet reporting started i think maybe little beyond that like any police officer faces there was a custodial death the custodial death was so well managed as you all know but about 12 years ago or 13 years ago of course i will not go into the details of why it would have occurred okay when some serious sexual abuse offense occurs still our civilization wants people to go and give a justice which is not very ethical and very democratic keeping that aside it equates to the custodial death also that is the reason why it could have been hushed up maybe 12 to 13 years ago without anything coming beyond taking to the hospital beyond that don't you think that journalists support police officers or law enforcement agencies in good intention during such instances yes what is that good intention hope it is not an excess no but democratically it is i don't think that is a way we have to function as pillars of criminal justice system isn't it so how reporting of information in a very moderate way where i will learn where people will know and where journalists feel satisfied the same news can be reported is something which can be thought after the next day legally nothing is wrong no action can be taken on anybody when a custodial death occurs but a news gets reported saying that custodial death has occurred you see what is this paradox what are you trying to project when nothing can be down out of what is done for what reason are you reporting it as a custodial death so in this particular scenario maybe about 12 years 13 years ago i thought why journalists did not concentrate on the legal aspects of the custodial death why the reporting didn't go in reporting the legal aspects the finer aspects of legality which could have been reported which would have made those articles very potent and very answerable and acknowledged by the court of law also these are the finer things which i think where journalists can really become powerful in making the democratic instruments very strong this has nothing to do with your leadership with your media houses the way they want you to report and all that it has simply to do with your professionalism and this professionalism can very smartly be upgraded i think through technology once it is put through some channel nobody even knows that who has reported it but the news can go viral the news can go well provided the finer aspects are being questioned in a very proper way yes second thing as a police officer one more experience of mine is certain incident occurs the certain incident starts say some very um, sensational thing starts today which may become sensational after a week or 10 days i have seen very few journalists who link up the things from today to the day which it becomes very sensational if you link up with the finer aspects of the news from the day it got reported to the day it has become sensational i think your piece of information can never become disinformation or misinformation but you forget what you have reported two days ago and you report a fresh today just you want the memory of the people to be very short sighted but please take it from me it's not like that people are very smart 
And just now, as I have said, especially our country, we have 40% of the young population. And their eyes and ears are very open. It's not that you are reporting something and they are taking it just like that. No, it's not like that. That is the reason why the workshops like this are very essential. And I feel, over a period of my professional experience, there has been a huge evol evolution of the way the information is being reported. The language has improved a lot. The language has become very understandable to the local population, number one. Number two, the local dialects have increased so much that I have more information at my footstep or on my fingertips to know on the same issue. That is one. Number two, more number of journalists reporting a single piece of information itself shows that, that you have to improve your quality because there is a huge competition for the viewership. That is second thing which each one of us have noticed. And number three, your relationship with the pillars of democracy or the criminal justice system should be very professional is what I expect. The more professional your relationship with the pillars of democracy is, there is less chance that information becomes dis or miss. The fact, the factual presentation of information will go on and the particular me media will be respected more and more within and outside also. That is within the pillars of democracy as well as citizens. This is number three which I have noticed. And for all this, I see a huge hope because there are many people who are taking up mass communication and mass journalism. And when, when youngsters are interested in this particular thing, I think conventional journalism is on taking a foot back. So what is going to be the new form of journalism is something which the conventional journalists with their own experience have to learn and we have to go forward where you support us for good reasons and we take you along with us for good reasons. Here there is nobody is trying to control anybody. Everybody have to control something which is false and also project which is true. This is our final goal or motto whether it is democracy or otherwise. With this. I once again uh, uh, thank Vice Chancellor of Manu for giving me this opportunity and all the journalist fraternity, especially the Urdu journalist fraternity of Telangana and all the students who have represented and all other esteemed guests. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you rightly said that we should follow and respect the ethos of journalism. It is a key point. I would like to share that our students are working with different platforms. They are working with Urdu media, they are working with English media, Telugu media, Marathi media, and with government of uh, central, in union government, uh, and in many uh, state governments, like in the government of Telangana, in government of, with government of Andhra Pradesh. And I'm happy to share that one of my students has just joined a US consulate. Yeah, first, he, Earlier also, there are a student who joined U.S. consulate like a Faisal Swab and uh, Zahoor, but so we are trying hard to achieve our goal. <coughs> now, uh, a standard protocol, uh, a tool is prepared for Urdu medium journalist. I would like to dignitaries. Uh, I would like to Mr. Uh, David Moyer Saab our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sayyid Anul Hassan Sahab, and our Lady IPS Officer, Ma'am Sumati, please release the standard operating procedure, uh, a tool which is prepared for Urdu journalists for fact-checking. I request Professor Anul Hassan Sahab, uh, Mr. David Moir Sahab, Professor Steven Chen, Sumati Ma'am, This is a prepared by Mr. Sudhakar Reddy and his colleague. I think uh, this is the first time when uh, Urdu medium journalist will receive a standard operating procedure in Urdu for fact checking. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call uh, one of my students, Uzma Sadaf, 
who is a student of BA Honours Journalism Mass Communication to just uh, brief for brief introduction to present a brief introduction of our chief guest, Mr. David Moir. Uzma Sadaf. Wishing you all a very pleasant morning. This is Uzma Sadaf from Department of Mass Communication and Journalism. And I am honored to welcome today's chief guest, who is none other than Mr. David Moyer. Please give him a big round of applause. Let me give you a brief introduction of him. Mr. David Moyer is a distinguished public diplomat, currently serving at the US consulate in Hyderabad. He is an expert in foreign affairs and is a part of the US State Department since 2003. Throughout his career, Mr. David has held several overseas assignments in countries such as Vietnam, Mexico, South Korea, and Cyprus, where he has made significant contributions to enhancing the United States diplomatic presence. In Washington, DC, Mr. David served as a deputy director in the UN Political Affairs Office. Recently, he concluded a uh, He uh, recently he concluded a Pearson Fellowship as a foreign policy advisor for Indiana Senator Todd Young, where he demonstrated his expertise in foreign policy and diplomacy. He is happily married to Audrey, who is also a foreign service officer. And as his next assignment, Mr. David will be serving as a public diplomacy counselor at the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. I heartily welcome you, sir as I am privileged to have you with us in this one-day training workshop on countering disinformation for Urdu journalists, which is to equip journalists on how to prevent fake news and disinformation and misinformation from creeping into the mainstream media. Please help me welcome Mr. David Moya again with a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for that kind introduction. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. And I, I can't take as much credit as I've been given for this program. I need to give some credit to my colleague, Basith, uh, whose idea this came up with. And then he partnered with Professor Stevenson of Osmania. And we just said we need to do some work in this space for disinformation. And so really the idea that we're, we ended up today is a result of Basith's good work with Professor Stevenson. So let's give them a round of applause as well. But it's really a pleasure to be here again with my good friend, Vice Chancellor Syed Hassan. It's also a pleasure to meet for the first time Srimati Sumati. It's, it's a pleasure to see the police get involved in, in these efforts. And I think it's a clear indication that this topic of disinformation and misinformation affects everybody, whether you're a police officer, a vice chancellor, a university professor, a US diplomat, a journalist, or even if you're just the average citizen, this topic affects everybody. So how do we get here? So just thinking about my own experience, I'm not that old, but you know, I'm, I'm getting older. When I was younger in the United States, there was only three TV stations, and every night at six o'clock, they would broadcast the news. And the person giving the news was very respected. Everyone in America knew that they would share the right information. So every day at six o'clock while we're eating our dinner, we would turn on the TV and we would watch the news. A lot of it was world news, but most of it was US news. And we, that's how we got our information. We knew that they would give us the correct information. It was very easy. There were three TV stations and they were all reputable and gave good information. So fast forward to I went off to university a few years ago. When I graduated from university, email did not exist yet. Okay, so it wasn't that long ago. I graduated from university, no email, no internet, no nothing. And now as we look at this book, if you thumb through it, all these amazing tools exist. None of these things existed just a few years ago. So that's a great step forward, right? 
But as we heard from our distinguished police officer, the world has changed dramatically. You know, we all carry around these great devices, a smartphone. We have access to so much information just at our fingertips. This is great. But as we've heard from many people this morning already, just because it's available on your phone or just because you can find some information, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that that is correct information. So it's very, it's a great privilege for the US government to partner with Osmani University and Manu as partners to help strengthen something that is fundamental to both of our country's beliefs. As we heard from, again, our distinguished police officer, the pillars of democracy. One of those pillars is access to information. Because what makes democracy work? Democracy is based on the idea that each individual member of that country, that community, has a voice, has the ability to make decisions and determine who leads their government and what the government decides. But we can't make those decisions on who to elect if we don't have the right information about them. And during every election cycle, whether we're talking about India, the United States, or other countries, there's lots of rumors that get started, right? We don't know if they're true or not. So we need to do a lot of research to make sure the people we are voting for are the people we think they are, and we know their record and we know their history. So even though we have a lot of information at our fingertips, that doesn't necessarily make our job easier. In fact, I think it's getting more and more difficult. We heard a reference to Elon Musk and Twitter, right? So Twitter is a fantastic tool, but it's also struggling with this idea of what is its responsibility to share information? Because in the old days, anybody could say anything they wanted on Twitter or Facebook. And some people say that's a great thing. It's freedom of speech, right? But what if that information you're sharing is not correct information? Then all of a sudden, a lie that you share on social media spreads around the world like a virus. And how do we know if it's correct or not? And I always use my mother as an example. My mother is in her 70s. She's a smart person, but she always isn't always sure what is true and what is not. So she often asks me, said, hey, I saw the story on the internet. Is it true? Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So if my own mother can be tricked by reading information that's not correct, I think anybody can be tricked. And that's why this training is so important. And that's why the role of all of the journalists that are here today is extremely important. Without professional journalists that have the skills and the talent and the desire to do their job to the best of their ability, democracies cannot succeed because your job is to inform the people about the truth, helping people stay informed so that they can make correct decisions, whether they're voting in an election or making a decision about their future, what their children will study. Your job as journalists is extremely important. I can't overstate that enough. And so this training is, is extremely fundamental. Uh, we've been very proud of the work we did initially with, with Telugu journalists, and that was so successful that we talked, reached out to Professor Stevenson. We said, we need to keep this program going. We need to expand it. And of course, being in responsible for this part of the, of the Indian country. We, we know that the Urdu journalists and the Urdu uh, media outlets provide an extremely valuable resource as well. So of course we wanted to do this in Urdu as well. And we are very proud of our partnership with Manu and a number of different facets. As you heard, we, we like to employ graduates of Manu. We also have a English language fellow from the United States who is working here at Manu right now. And we are, in the coming months, we'll be announcing a new partnership relating to a book donation as well. So we, we have a very close relationship with Manu and I'm very proud of my personal friendship with the Vice Chancellor and all of the leadership here at Manu. Because as much as this might appear that this is a US government project, it's really just more of a partnership. Again, the United States, we often say is the oldest democracy in the world. 
India, we say, is the largest democracy in the world. So we both play very important roles in setting an important example to other countries about how democracy should operate. And again, those democracies can operate without correct information. So again, we circle back to the important role of journalists, the role that each of you play to keep our two individual countries strong, and for collaborations like this that make our two countries stronger when we work together. Because both countries value the importance of democracy, we both value the importance of correct information, and we can make our, each country stronger and our partnership stronger when we collaborate in efforts like this. So again, it's my privilege to be here. It's my privilege to represent the US government in this collaboration with Manu, with Osmania, and with all of you. You have a very important role to play, and I appreciate your willingness to do it, and I wish you all the success in this program. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Uh, now, I would like to invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor for presidential remark. Most respectfully, I request Professor Sayyid Anwar Hassan Saab. Taliyon se istakbal karein. Our honorable guest this morning, David Moyer, a known person and very good friend of mine. Sumati ji, earlier also I shared a platform and discussed various things. And then our friend and very close to our university from Osmania University, Professor Stevenson. Then Umam Noor is also a very young and bright journalist here. Professor Ehtisham, Professor Faryad, Professor Shakil, I am a colleagues friends, students, girls and boys. Often we talk about various type of journalism. We say yellow journalism. We say red journalism. Then again, what is white journalism, you will get to you know. And one day, when your eyes are totally blackened, then you will call it black journalism. So journalism, various categories of journalism, you see, one after another we have been witnessing. I don't know, during the postmodernism, how many more attributes we will see, how many and this is also, I mean, my colleague, you know, Professor Faryad saying that this is the age of information. No. 20 years back, former, our honorable president of India, Abul Kalamji, he very rightly pointed out and made it clear that the age of information is over. Now, this is the age of analysis. You have to do the analysis and correct analysis. What is news and what is, what are news and what are views, all to be put together and see how, it, how both go together and what role they play. So journalists have to play a role. You know, there is a thin line between good and bad. Either it's good or bad. You know, good conductor, bad conductor. Good character, bad character. There is nothing like, you know, good and bad both. You cannot have good and bad. 
both together. You have to decipher what is good, what is bad. And let me tell you that we started, as far as Urdu is concerned, we started with a very, very positive note. And we are carrying forward the legacy of Maulana Azad, who started his journey as a journalist. Al-Hilal and Al-Balagh, nobody can forget the contribution of Maulana Azad and others. We have, today we realize how Mulvi Abdulha, Mulvi Bakr, how Mulvi Bakr contributed, you see, in, in an environment which was totally adverse environment during our independent movement. And therefore, he is martyred. He is still alive, and people will remember him because of his true journalism. As I said, there is a thin line. Thin line is since Sumati ji is sitting here. One day we were sharing a platform on, and then I made a statement on about our campus. And I said that our campus is a smoke-free campus. It was my statement. No, but you know what happened, madam, you see, the, some of the journalists, you see, wrote that there is nobody as a smoker in Manu. Do you believe that nobody is a smoker here? Yeah. There are many. But my, you know, attribute was different. I was telling the smoke-free. Smoke-free is a in different meaning, different set of meaning, in fact. It's not that, you see, there is nothing like a dhuwa in there on the campus. See, see you, can't, you can't just claim it, in fact. That's how, you see, you will find a thin line between, you know, uh, poor journalism and better journalism, in fact. So what I believe that we should be, uh, you know, very down to earth in terms of our assessment. We should not close our eyes. We should not dump our hearts and minds because we have certain responsibilities. We are carrying forward certain responsibilities upon our shoulders. And this will take us to the next millennium. What is happening? I just recall one incident long, long ago. I think it was 83, 1983. Many of you might have not born. 1983, there was a person, a very a delighted and very charming and a very, uh, you know, jovial person, a journalist, Khushwan Singh. You must have heard the name of uh, Shri Khushwan Singh Ji, a Sardar Ji, in fact, you see. I had the opportunity to present my latest research on Omar Khayyam. Then I presented an article, extensive article to him. I was just, you know, I wanted to meet him because he was a wonderful person, jam of a person. I wanted to invite him to a conference to preside over. But he regretted and that time also he was not feeling very well. So, but he studied my paper. And next morning I saw in Hindustan Times, because my total intention and the crux of the article was to, to, to say that it was based on philosophy, not just poetry, rather philosophy, to what extent Khayyam was influenced by a philosophy, whether he put this or any other philosophy. But later on, when I saw the, I mean, the kind of journalistic views, you know, but see how, I mean, I mean, a literate and the journalist, you know, they are, views are different, in fact. But not that, you know, uh, something uh, written which hurts uh, your feelings, in fact. So he wrote, you see, he, he wrote finally, he started, you know, explaining what is, what is wine and what is pitcher and what is 
glass and what is sake and how to how to do how 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 to do merry making and all sorts of things. You see, sitting on the bank of river and then doing something sort of and that as he was in fact was very lively person and he wrote blah 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 quoted so many things and see then finally he he wrote concluded saying that I beg to differ with Professor Hassan. And then I said, I beg to differ. No, 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 there is no philosophy with wine. Wine is to, to take pleasure in fact, rather to define, you know, in terms of philosophy. So I condemn this totally, in fact, this claim that wine has something to do with philosophy. And then I enjoy, I, I, I am so excited to see uh, 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 that that wine which was very special. I mean, I, I don't know, but that's how I knew. Some Shiva's regal, in fact, he said, I am delighted to see a bottle of Shiva's regal, you see, there. <laughs> and then he started explaining, I am totally intoxicated. By, by, after reading this paper, you see, it has, it has really damaged my intoxicated body. Now look at this Khoshwan uh, Singh, I mean, and really making something, some remarks readable. In fact. Because you know, your attentions are drawn. He's not criticizing me, but he's expressing his own views, his own idea of writing, in fact. Particular idea of writing, you see, a journalist, you know, is known for his writing, in fact. So therefore, you see, you have to identify what is correct and what is incorrect and how to correct it. I am I appreciate the kind of efforts our Department of Journalism has made and then they have come out with a document to check the reality. And this is the time. Please collect the information and check to what extent the information is correct. Otherwise, you will fall prey to so many other boxes, so many other chats, and land up nothing. So this is, this is high time. Let us do some exercises. I am sure that during this day-long practical session, you will learn so many things, and you will try to implement it as early as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It is not possible without your support to organize such a program in campus. I will tell you that in the cyber security, there is a very well known Hindustan in the world, which is a well known personality. When you have Krishna Shastri Pandyala Ji, we have been in the auditorium, we have been in the auditorium, and we have been in the auditorium, we have been in the auditorium, and we have been in the auditorium, and we have been in the auditorium. बहुत सारे गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के बहुत सारे मिनिस्ट्रीज में साइबर सिक्योरिटी और इस तरह के इश्यूज पर बहुत बड़ा काम है आपका एक वेल नोन पर्सनालिटी हैं जनाब कृष्णा सास्त्री पेंडियाला जी दूसरे शेषंस में आपके एस एन रिसोर्स पर्सन आप सुन पाएंगे आपकी जो चीजें हैं उसे आप फायदा उठाएंगे तालियों से स्तकबाल करें। Thank you, sir. Now I would like to invite our colleague, Professor Tesha Mehmet Khan Saab, to propose vote of thanks. Assalamu alaikum. I request Honorable Vice Chancellor to give a bouquet to Professor Mohammad Faryas sir. Who is the main uh, uh, organizer for this program? We actually forget to do this. Uh, please. First of all, I am thankful to. Our chief guest, Mr. David Moyer, who is public affairs uh, head of U.S. Consulate General, Hyderabad, 
sir, for coming and giving this opportunity to organize this one-day workshop on disinformation, countering disinformation for Urdu journalists. I extend my sincere thanks on behalf of the department and university to associate with your esteemed organization, first time for the department to have this wonderful opportunity and sparing your time for this uh, inaugural session. I also uh, thankful to our uh, honorable vice chancellor who always support, guide, and provide all the uh, guidance uh, for making so many programs successfully. Sir, aapka bahut bahut shukriya. Aap, hamare uh, vice chancellor, Hardeel Aziz vice chancellor, jo ke department ki har activities, aaj saare nao baje program tha, lekin sir ne itne jaldi aane ke liye jo hai apni raza mandi di. Main aapka bahut bahut shukr guzar hoon, sir. Main aaj ki guest of honor, Shri Mati B. Sumati, IPS officer, DIG, Women's Safety, Government of Telangana, Hyderabad. Aapka bhi bahut bahut shukr guzar hoon, main, ki aapne apna kimti vakt itne बिजी शेड्यूल के बाद भी आपने निकाला मैं अपने जो दूसरे जो हमारे सबसे अहम हैं हमारे हर दिल अजीज दोस्त मिस्टर बासित अली साहब जो कि मीडिया एडवाइजर हैं यूएस काउंसलेट जनरल उन्होंने एक पाइनियर रोल अदा किया कि इस प्रोजेक्ट को और हमारे डिपार्टमेंट और स्टूडेंट्स को भी इसका हिस्सा बनाया पहले सिर्फ चार स्टूडेंट सेलेक्ट हुए थे हमारे इस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में लेकिन आप के कंसेंट से और आपके सुपरविजन से माजिस साहब के सपोर्ट से और प्रोफेसर स्टीवेंसन साहब के सपोर्ट से आठ स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट डबल हो गए हमारे स्टूडेंट्स के नंबर्स इस वर्कशॉप इस ट्रेनिंग प्रोजेक्ट में मैं आपको बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूं बासी साहब प्रोफेसर के स्टीवेंसन सर का पहले एक एसोसिएशन जो फरियाद साहब ने बताया प्रोफेसर फरियाद साहब ने कि पहला एसोसिएशन है डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जर्नलिज्म उस्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी से फ्यूचर में भी सर आपके हेल्प uh, से हम और भी प्रोजेक्ट चाहेंगे कि आपके साथ मिलके करें और इस प्रोजेक्ट में हमें अपना हिस्सा बनाने के लिए आपका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और इसके साथ ही मैं आज के जो बहुत ही अहम जो आज ऑनलाइन टूल किट जो ट्रांसलेट हुई है उसमें मिस्टर वी सुधाकर सर जो कि हमारे गेस्ट थे आ नहीं सके किसी वजह से लेकिन नेक्स्ट सेशन में होंगे हु इज़ द गूगल इनिशिएटिव सर्टिफाइड ट्रेनर उनका भी मैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूं कि उन्होंने उर्दू और इंग्लिश में जो है ट्रांसलेशन करके इस टूल किट को जो है सक्सेसफुली आज के प्रोग्राम में उर्दू जर्नलिस्ट के लिए एक डॉक्यूमेंटेशन के तौर पे इसको जो है जो प्रोड्यूस किया हो आगे फ्यूचर में उर्दू जर्नलिस्ट के लिए बहुत फ़ायदेमंद होगा मैं हमारी दिल्ली की जर्नलिस्ट जो कि बहुत दूर से आई हैं मैडम उमाम नूर मैम आपका भी मैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ टाइम कम था शायद आपको भी हम नेक्स्ट सेशन में सुनेंगे नेक्स्ट और प्रोफेसर कृष्णा शास्त्री पंड्याला सर जो कि एक्स साइबर फॉरेंसिक साइंटिस्ट सीएफएसएल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया में अपनी सर्विसेज अंजाम दे चुके हैं आपका भी सर मैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूं नेक्स्ट सेशन सर का ही है और मैं आप लोगों का बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ जो कि इस प्रोग्राम ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में जो भी जर्नलिस्ट शहर से और दूसरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट से आए हैं आप लोगों ने आप सभी का जो है मैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं और हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी के डीन नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ टीचिंग स्टाफ आप सबका भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया कि आप इस प्रोग्राम को आपने सक्सेस और कामयाब बनाया मैं आ, आ, इस प्रोग्राम में हमारी आईएमसी की टीम उनका भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूं जिन्होंने इस प्रोग्राम को सक्सेसफुली जो है रिकॉर्ड करने के लिए सारी फैसिलिटीज़ प्रोवाइड की और साथ ही साथ इंजीनियरिंग सेक्शन और हमारा जो स्टेट सेक्शन है उनका भी शुक्रगुजार हूँ कि उन्होंने सारी फैसिलिटीज़ हमें प्रोवाइड की सीआईटी डिपार्टमेंट ने भी हमें सारी फैसिलिटीज़ प्रोवाइड की उसके लिए भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया मैं उम्मीद करता हूँ कि इस वन डे ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के ज़रिए हमारे जो उर्दू जर्नलिस्ट हैं जो सबसे बड़ा मसाइल है एक क्रेडिबिलिटी का मीडिया क्रेडिबिलिटी का उसको जो है अहम जो है एक रोल अदा करेंगे कि जो मुकाम पहले था मीडिया का वो दोबारा हासिल हो सके और मैं अपनी बात अपने प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद फरियाज साहब का भी शुक्रगुजार हूँ कि इन्होंने जो है इस प्रोग्राम को ऑर्गेनाइज किया बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज स्टैंड अप फॉर नेशनल एंथम जनगढ़ मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड़ उत्कल बंगा 
विंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्छल जलधि तरंगा तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जनगण मंगल दायक जय हो भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हो जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे मैं अपने इस काउंटरिंग डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन के पहले सेशन में मिस्टर शास्त्री पंड्याला साहब का बहुत बहुत खैर मकदम करता हूं और मैं अपने एम ए जे एम सी फाइनल ईयर की स्टूडेंट सिद्दीका फातिमा से रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं कि आप सर का ब्रीफ जो है इंट्रोडक्शन तारुफ जो है आ, सर के बारे में रखें प्लीज अ वेरी ब्राइट गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल दिस इज सिद्दीका फातिमा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मास कम्युनिकेशन एंड जर्नलिज्म and i am honored to welcome today's guest mr krishna sastri pandiyala he is currently working as a partner current secretary consulting and earns and youngs llp india before this mr sastri worked as executive director cyber security service advisory pwc india and global head at foreign management and digital forensics and 23 years with directorate of forensics scientists ministries of home affairs government of india as forensic scientist and handled a large number of cyber forensics investigations he got various awards commendations appreciations letters some of his awards are union home ministers award and ministry of home affairs awards etc mr sastri co-authors a book of cyber crime and forensic title computer crime and forensics in 2001 I'm glad to have you here sir this one day training workshop on countering disinformation for urdu journalist which is to provide journalist on how to prevent fake news from creeping into the mainstream media please help me welcome mr krishna sastri pandiyala with a big round of applause now i request to mr sastri sir to take the session ahead and i hope that this session will enrich further for this uh, countering disinformation uh, through this workshop thank you so very good afternoon to all of you uh, it's 11:14 and we are supposed to start at 11 so i'm going to brief you in the next one hour time that has given the session name is something called digital safety and the cyber crime scenario because you being the journalist you are going to write a lot of things in the newspaper in respect to the language in which you are writing if you want to write a very good article first you should understand the things in a better space i think then only you can able to do the justice and the right message will go to the public i would like to thank uh, the university for inviting me to take the session and here all the views i am expressing are purely my personal views neither the organization where i am working or the government of india or some other places where in the world i work nearly in 22 countries via the government agencies through interpol and all but all the views here i am expressing are purely my personal views and for the purpose of academic only please remember so let us go here it is before you go for the actual cyber crimes what are happening and how organizations individuals nations and the whole international world is getting victimized a very basic understanding to see what is happening hope every one of you might have gone for taking money from the atms say yes sir no when you go for an atm for taking money there are two types of atm machines you might have seen in one atm machine once you insert the card first it will ask the pin number then lot of questions will come how much money you want to withdraw is it from savings bank current account etc you will agree there is another set of atm machines first it will ask the questions and finally it will ask the pin number 
So tell me between these two ATM machines, which ATM machine is more safe and secure? Is it the one asking the PIN number first or is it the one asking the PIN number last? It is very easy to give the answer, it is an objective question with only two options A or B. But let us go for it, how wrong you are correct. If you go for the ATM, there was a board outside saying only one man is allowed inside. Have you seen it? Yeah. Uh, sir, what is your name? Okay. In throughout my discussion, I would probably use Basit name. Okay, don't mind for it. Basit went for an ATM. There was a board outside, only one man allowed. He went inside. He did his ATM transaction and came out. I'm a fraudster. I want to steal the money, especially his PIN number. Okay, PIN number is very, very important. So once he went to ATM center and has withdrawn the money, I entered the same ATM machine with my mobile phone. In the mobile phone where there is a camera was there in the backside, I'm going to keep a small lens called thermal lens. And one application will be installed in what? mobile phone. What is this thermal lens or the thermal camera? It is a sensor actually. Please remember after COVID came when you are coming out of airport and all, somebody is putting a camera on you. Have you seen it? Yes. What this thermal camera? It records your body temperature. Please remember this point. Suppose I took my selfie on a normal day. It means where I have not got fever. And I took my selfie on the day I got the fever. The day I got the fever, if I take my photograph with the thermal lens, my photograph will be more bright in color. Because what is this thermal camera? More the temperature, more is the brightness. Please remember this point. Higher the temperature, more is the brightness. That is how the thermal camera will work. So Basit went to an ATM center did his ATM transaction, came out. I entered into the same ATM machine. In less than, remember, 180 seconds. It means three minutes. And I took the photograph of the keypad by using the thermal camera. I know what are the last four buttons he has pressed it. By pressing, it is not the heat from the finger, but the electrical energy is getting converted into what? thermal energy heat. That heat is the one I am taking photograph. So the brightest spot is the one that is nothing but the last digit. And less brightest is the previous digit like that. I can identify what are the four buttons, remember, Basit has pressed here. It means I can able to get the pin number of Basit by just taking the photograph of, remember, ATM keypad. Now tell me, sir, first pin number is better or last pin number is better? First pin number is better. Let us go for some more. He went for ATM centers. There you might have seen two types of keypads. One is a plastic keypad, another is a metallic keypad. Have you seen it? Which one is more safe and secure? Right. The answer is, metallic is more safe and secure because metal dissipates the heat at a faster rate. In the case of metallic, the fraudster is having a window time of only 86 seconds. In the case of plastic, the fraudster is having a window time of 180 seconds, provided the air condition was maintained at 19 degrees centigrade. Today, go to Google and type it. ATM keypad plus thermal camera Plastic and metallic keypad plus temperature. When the temperature was 19 degrees, how much time the fraudster is having? 20 degrees, how much time is having? 30 degrees, how much time is having? All this research has been done. But the fellow who did this fraud is only 8th standard failed fellow. After this fraud has been done and it has been reported, the research has been done, people have published the papers and they got PhDs. So why I mentioned about it, 
if you want to be a very good security fellow or if you want to be a very good crime reporter first you should know how the crime happens then only you can able to do the justice otherwise like a layman sense something you can write it out which may be correct or may not be correct or it is going to send a wrong message that's why i did more than 1500 investigations in my life i never seen any time remember the same fraud happened is again it has been happened and no fraud has could be detected before it has been happened because the way the fraudster thinks policemen cannot think it please remember this point very very carefully because fraudsters thinking and capabilities are what quite different we are going to discuss don't worry about this how many of you every day after going to your office will check what are the wires that got connected at the back side of your computer sab apne ek professor hai aap office mein aata hai computer type karta hai username password kaam karta hai kabhi aapne piche ja ke kya wires hai koi koi dekha nahi dekha कोई नहीं देखता ठीक है देख लीजिए आपका कीबोर्ड है पीछे इट इज गेटिंग कनेक्टेड टू ए पोर्ट हैव सीन इट यूएसबी पोर्ट हो सकता है सीरियल पोर्ट हो सकता है देर इज अ स्मॉल वायर दैट इज अवेलेबल हियर दैट इज 400 हंड्रेड रुपीज इट कैन स्टोर अप टू फोर्टी जी बी ऑफ द डाटा कनेक्ट दिस वायर वन साइड टू की बोर्ड एंड वन साइड टू सी it means keyboard or cpu ka beech mein this is where i got connected basid came to office he was not aware piche kya wire se dekha nahi simply switched on the computer typed username and password he typed the examination question paper he visited some website uploaded something downloaded something sham ko band karke chala gaya Seven o'clock, I went to Basit Chamber. This wire, I brought it and connected to my computer. Morning, when we switched down, what is the username? He type or password? He type or what are the examination paper? He type or the whole question paper and everything will be available there. And this is popularly called hardware key logger. Suppose I came to this place at morning ten o'clock and I will go home tomorrow morning. Let us assume. in my absence what my daughter has done on my house computer system if i connect this wire and come here tomorrow morning i can take out this wire and i can able to see at what time she switched on the computer what website she visited what she uploaded what she downloaded everything is going to get stored here and this is properly called hardware key logger it locks all the keystrokes you are typing on the keyboard please remember whatever you are typing in the keyboard will get recorded here in addition to it is going to get recorded in what computers you got the point why i am mentioning examination question papers were leaked in some universities where student went into the professor's computers and they connected this wire next day they came out see if i am discussing this case koi bhi kiya to mera responsibility nahi hai please remember why i am mentioning about it i will tell you later because of this wire only banks are telling the customers so don't use our keyboard and go for what virtual keyboards aapne dekha hoga correct o oh, cable mein beech mein you are seeing here knob usme 40 gb tak data store ho sakta hai aaj amazon mein ja ke hardware key lagar aapko 800 rupaye mein mil rahi hai do din mein deliver ho jayega koi puchta nahi aapko theek hai so because of this type of wire solely banks are telling the customers not to use over what keyboard they are asked to use what virtual keyboards now let us see the problem now if i want to steal anything from mr basit computer i should go physically access his room connect this wire then only i can take this data do you agree suppose basi there is locking his room every day so i don't have any access to his computer or his room can i connect this wire no now this problem has been resolved by the other point that is something called software key logger 
I send a mail to Basit saying this is our promotion letter. So the second subject line is present as promotion letter. Everybody will click on that. And you open. That mail is having attachment. That attachment is a word document saying your promotion letter. So Basit just clicked on that promotion letter. Immediately, this computer system will connect to some hacker's computer system and download a software in this computer system. And that computer system will, whatever software got downloaded, it will record everything you are typing on that computer and send it to the hacker. You got the point? Earlier one is a software and this is a what? Sorry, hardware and this is a what? Software. It also do two things. Not only whatever you are typing on the keyboard, it takes the screenshot of your computer and also send it to him. It means I am using virtual keyboard. My pin number is 4216. You know, when I use virtual keyboard, I will use only mouse. I kept my mouse on 4 and clicked. Tell me the cursor is present on whom? 4. The second cursor is present on what? 2. Then cursor is present on what? 1. Got the point? So, fraudster will get 4 photographs. Where in the first photograph the cursor was present on 4, second place 2, third place 1, fourth place 6. So, fraudster will also get your pin number. So, today virtual keyboards is also of what? No use. Third point. During lunch time, Basit came to my room and we are all discussing together who is going to win the elections next year. Whatever you are speaking before the computer, my computer will record without my knowledge and send it to the hacker. Today, every computer system is having also what? Camera. It automatically makes the camera on takes the video whoever is coming in front of that, again it is going to send it to the hacker. And this can be delivered not only via mail having attachment, it can be sent via WhatsApp with a link. It can be sent as an SMS with a what? Link. So what is the lesson you have learned out of this is never open any mails that has come from unknown persons. Never open, remember, any SMSs having a link which has come from what? Unknown numbers. And never open any SMS messages having what? Link. If you second you click on that links etc. Something will get installed in your mobile phone and from there the damage will happen. Let me tell you one case, remember here. A Hyderabad-based software engineer, both wife and husbands are software engineers and they committed suicide around 5-6 months back. So, further on investigation, what has come to know? They have a, remember, today work from home started and everybody is having their computers, etc., so only in their bedrooms. One day to their personal mailbox, they have received a mail having something like an offer they clicked on that, this software keylogger got installed in their system. They are not aware about that. Now, after some time, 15 days or 20 days later, somebody has sent, remember, a mail to them. This is our bedroom photographs and this is the bedroom video. And these people initially paid 5 lakhs, then 8 lakhs like that. They paid 60 lakhs of rupees in total. And finally, they could not bear the remember the interests and all they are paying. Both of them committed what? Suicide. Initially, husband thought it's a wife is doing the trick of sending. And otherwise, they are also suspecting. Wife is suspecting husband. Husband is suspecting. Later, they came to know they are both are become a victim of this cyber crime. So one lesson, please understand this point. Never open any mail that I have received from what? unknown persons. Let it be mail or let it be remember an SMS having a link or it may be your what? A WhatsApp message having link. 
आई थिंक यू मे बी नोइंग द लास्ट टेन डिन से बहुत सारे लोग को इंडोनेशिया वियतनाम से इतना कॉल्स आ रहे हैं व्हाट्सएप में आर यू गेटिंग दैट नेवर ट्राई टू ओपन दैट नेवर ट्राई टू अटेंड दैट लेट आई विल टेल यू नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में कोविड आने के बाद सब फेसबुक एक्सेट्रा में एक गेम शुरू हो गया सैरी चैलेंज आपने सुना नहीं हो सुना पता नहीं बहुत सारा लेडीज क्या करता है एक फोटोग्राफ लेता है नया सैरी पहन के वो फेसबुक में डाल के दस फ्रेंड्स को डालता है ऑल द फिलोस विल सेंड ए मैसेज आई एम एक्सेप्टिंग यूर चैलेंज वो भी एक फोटो लेता है नया सैरी पहन के वो डालता है वो दस आदमी को चलाते यू गॉट द पॉइंट ए स्कीम टाइप चला गया ये सैरी चैलेंज स्कीम बोल के या वो कोविड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में जून जुलाई में घर में बैठा कोई काम नहीं बिकॉज बाहर जाने को कोई रूट नहीं ये सब के अच्छा है हमारा पीछे पड़ता था शारी करो करो शारी कर पुर के बहुत हस्बैंड बहुत फेस प्रॉब्लम फेस केस में एक्चुअली ये केस में क्या हुआ एक हैदराबाद का लड़का है उसका नाम श्रीधर है मैं तो नाम चेंज कर दिया बदल दिया वो ट्वेंटी एट से सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर शादी नहीं हुआ उसने बेंगलुरु गया ई बींग रिमेंबर एंग फेलो ही वेंट टू डेटिंग वेबसाइट वो डेटिंग वेबसाइट में जाने के बाद मोबाइल फोन में नीचे से एक फोटोग्राफ आया हाई माई नेम इज सुरेखा आई एम थर्टी ईयर्स ओल्ड इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू मेक फ्रेंडशिप एंड सेक्स विथ मी कॉन्टैक्ट बोल के वो टेलीफोन नंबर भी आ गया आता रहता है इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं बट इसमें सरप्राइजिंग क्या है वो फोटोग्राफ और नाम दोनों श्रीधर का सिस्टर का वो बेंगलुरु में रहता था ये भी बेंगलुरु गया बट टेलीफोन नंबर इसका नहीं है देन इसने वो फोटोग्राफ अकेले कट करके स्क्रीनशॉट लेके उसका सिस्टर को भेजा पूछा ऐसा फोटोग्राफ तुमने कहां रखा उसने बोला मैं रखा फेसबुक में रखा बोल के बता दे ये सारी चैलेंज में पार्टिसिपेट किया वो नया नया सारी है वो पहन के मैं रखा इसके अलावा किधर भी नहीं रखा बोल के एक्चुअली उस समय क्या हुआ आपने कभी फेसबुक में गया था ऊपर आता ना लिव लिव इन हैदराबाद लिव इन बेंगलुरु देखा आपने एक आदमी ने क्या किया जो हैदराबाद में पूरा लड़की का फोटोग्राफ है वो फाइव थाउजेंड फोटोग्राफ्स डाउनलोड करके रखा बेंगलुरु का भी रखा पुणे के भी रखा कोचिन का भी रखा ऐसा डाउनलोड करके बहुत फोल्डर्स बना दिया राइट जो हैदराबाद का फाइव थाउजेंड फोटोग्राफ बेंगलुरु का फाइव थाउजेंड फोटोग्राफ एक्सेट्रा आप कभी भी बेंगलुरु गए फॉर एग्जांपल मैं केरला गया मैं मोबाइल फोन जाके यूट्यूब में गया तो मेरा को केरला का एडवर्टीजमेंट्स आता है ऐसे ही कैसे आता है मैं यूट्यूब करेक्ट हुआ तो मेरा आईपी एड्रेस से पता चलता है आई एम इन वॉट केरला इफ आई ओपन द सेम थिंग इन बेंगलुरु देन दे केम टू नो बेस ऑन द आई एड्रेस आई एम प्रेजेंट इन वॉट बेंगलुरु दैट इज कॉल्ड जियो लोकेशन ये लड़का अकाउंट डाउनलोड किया है सब कुछ फोटोग्राफ डेटिंग कंपनी वालों को सेल कर सेल कर दिया डेटिंग कंपनी वाला इसको पैसा दिया भाई इतना फोटोग्राफ्स के इतना बोल के जो पूरा आदमी कोई भी इंडोर गया तो इंडोर का लड़की का आता है कोई भी बेंगलुरु गया तो बेंगलुरु लड़की का फोटोग्राफ्स आता है सो सारी चैलेंज प्रोग्राम हैज बिकम वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट वॉट प्रॉब्लम सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ही बाई दिस इज हैपनिंग आप लोग सब बहुत सारे लोग को फेसबुक अकाउंट है नेवर एक्सेप्ट एनी फेसबुक रिक्वेस्ट दैट हैज कम फ्रॉम व्हाट अन नोन पर्सन एंड फेसबुक का आपको लॉक कर दीजिए एंड वेन एवर यू रिसीव ए रिक्वेस्ट काइंडली सी हाउ मेनी पीपल आर कॉमन फ्रेंड्स म्यूचुअल फ्रेंड्स आर कॉमन मिनिमम फिफ्टी हो तो वो एक्सेप्ट मत कर मिनिमम फिफ्टी मैं बता रहा हूं आपको तो रीजन क्या है दो तीन हुआ तो भी आप एक्सेप्ट कर रहे हैं मत करिए बिकॉज फ्रॉडस्टर ने भेजा आपका नॉलेज है आपका फ्रेंड को नॉलेज नहीं होगा वो एक्सेप्ट कर दिया देन वो कॉमन हो जाएगा आपको इसका वजह से मिनिमम फिफ्टी लोग को रखिए अदरवाइज डोंट एक्सेप्ट एनी रिक्वेस्ट दैट हैज कम फ्रॉम व्हाट अन नोन पर्सन नाउ बिफोर यू गो फॉर सम मोर केसेस एक्सेप्ट्रा लेट एस गो फॉर एग्जैक्टली वेयर वी आर फेसिंग द प्रॉब्लम I born in 1960s like aapka professor sahab sabka maybe they were born early and i used to think i am very very fortunate fellow why 1960 mein main agriculture revolution dekha 
सेवेंटीज में इंडस्ट्रियल रिवोल्यूशन एटीज में कंप्यूटर रिवोल्यूशन नाइन्टीज में इंटरनेट रिवोल्यूशन टू थाउजेंड में मोबाइल रिवोल्यूशन एंड टू थाउजेंड टेन के बाद आई ओ टी रिवोल्यूशन आया वॉट इज इस आई ओ टी आई ओ टी स्टैंड फॉर इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स यू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस टूडे आई कैन गेट दिस कनेक्टेड टू दिस कंप्यूटर हियर बट आई कॉन कनेक्ट दिस वन फ्रॉम अलास्का रीजन यू विल एग्री बिकॉज देर इज नो इंटरनेट बट बट वॉट इज आई ओ टी थ्री थिंग्स एनी वेयर कनेक्शन एनी टाइम कनेक्शन एनी थिंग यू कैन गेट कनेक्टेड प्लीज रिमर दैट इज पॉपुलरली कॉल्ड एज वॉट आई ओ टी टूडे वी आर ऑल लिविंग इन आई ओ टी आर आई गो सम एग्जाम्पल्स यूल अंडरस्टैंड इट then again i am fortunate in 1960 i have seen barter system i being from a middle class mera mother mera ko ek cup of remember sugar deke baju walon ko deke usse aadha cup coffee powder leke wo puchta hai hai na there is a barter system then physical currencies deka smart contracts deka then today is what digital currencies hope you are aware about what is that i have seen villages i have seen towns i have seen cities I am seeing what smart cities, but here in India, my smart city meaning is different. Smart city means you all think that there are roads, underground drainage, there is electricity connection. That is not it. I will show you what is smart city. I will show you. In 2016, I visited one country where in that country, every citizen of that country who got 50 years of age, the government has given a watch. and they should wear that watch what that watch will do it records my heartbeat and it records my pulse rate 24 bar 7 and this data will be sent to hospital server through satellite communication so every citizen of the country who is 50 plus years their data is going to be recorded in the hospital servers continuously assume shastri is a citizen of the country and if my age is more than 50 years and i am a heart patient then what they have written specifically rule since i am a heart patient if the heartbeat becomes less than 50 and more than 200 immediate an alert will come that alert will go as sms to the ambulance and this watch is having a geo tracking ambulance fellows knows on which road shastri is walking they will come and pick me and drop it in the hospital you know how much time they are taking to for this any one of you can guess it 2 minutes within 2 minutes the citizen is not even aware there is a irregular heartbeat the ambulance fellow will come and say sir aap andar baithiye thoda gadbade aapka heart ko this is the meaning of our what the smart city and this is what the iot revolutions are going to create for all of us but i am a hacker assume i want to take revenge against shastri already kaha rakha less than 50 more than 200 you got the point maine bank remember hospital server ko hack karke 50 ko 10 bana diya 200 ko 500 bana diya till it becomes less than 10 and more than 500 no alert will come you got the point if no alert comes even after alert comes also less than 10 means already person is what gone so we are going to discuss about how this iot devices problems we are going to face it how the future trends of cyber crimes are happening it is then i also seen something called web 1.0 remember when internet came it is like a online newspaper only that is called web 1.0 web 2.0 means reading the newspaper and also typing two way communication with audio and video streaming now we went for something called web 3.0 what is this web 3.0 physical systems interact with virtual systems as on day today if i want to see aishwarya rai movie i will go to google and type aishwarya rai movie you will agree now maybe in the next couple of years i will sit before my computer and think aishwarya rai there the aishwarya rai movie will start that is where the new word is coming properly called as what metaverse 
आपने सुना होगा आपका फेसबुक नाम इज वॉट मेटाफर्स व्हाट्सएप इज वॉट सो वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन बाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स इफ एवरी थिंग गोस वेल यू विल नॉट सी एनी बैंक एट ऑल यू विल सीट एट होम एंड वी आर ए रिमेंबर स्पेट्स एंड यूर अवतार विल गो टू बैंक गिव शेह कैन टू मैनेजर अवतार एंड मनी विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड नो मैनेजर नो बैंक मैनेजर विल बी एट होम ओनली please understand there is no physical bank you got the point so we are all entering into a new generation popularly called as nothing but what metaverse so metaverse is place where virtually people are meeting and this conference also will not find anyone i will sit at home and you will sit at home but this hall will be there his avatar will sit in this chair his avatar will sit in this chair and my avatar is going to speak and your avatars are going to listen but already four cases has been registered a 91 year old lady came and said i am getting gang raped frequently by this 86 year old person victim is in australia and the fellow who did the rape is somewhere in what america he never seen that lady that lady has never seen but this lady made a complaint i am virtually this fellow is raping me now police is reluctant whether to book the case or not to book the case how to investigate it now that's where the new law is also coming to picture called metaverse law we will discuss that if the time permits so what we are all thinking is going to get completely changed that's where virtual reality is getting converted into augmented reality so that's where we are getting lot of advantage you can see that how internet is really translating for every one minute this much amount of things are that are happening facebook if you look at per minute 44 million views are happening and you can see how much amount of data is getting uploaded in youtube per minute if you look at it 694k hours of the data is getting what uploaded in the youtube you can think of how big the things are moving so how the technology trends are happening today if you want to enter into airport they are going to ask you sir i want to have a aadhar card have you seen it now we are getting a biometric based systems i don't know whether they can able to so small chip will be kept into the body all becoming a part of normal life in sweden we have created a new implant which is not a chip it's a free device where you can add different lights so if you want to enter into any building that chip will have entire aadhar card data data for the car driving now, license number everything is going to be available it is available the, only the for how much 3 dollars swedes haven't been shy about upgrading themselves with just the they're using that chip inside the body thousands already have microchip implants that they use in their daily lives waving their hand to get entrance to the gym confirm Train their id or make payments airport entrances apartment short entrances apartment short moments of pain Everything not putting them off the becoming cheap. part swede that's part what the machine. technology we don't have much time let this me go here some an... now future how the mobile phones are getting just you can look at here will you call me sorry will you call me you mean telephone yeah? yes where now but this is in right here this is why i wanted to have lunch you just find me now <laughs> Hello Bethany speaking. Hello. You phoning for Bethany? Yes. What are you doing? This is Bethany. Can you hear me? Well, you're right in front of me. But can you hear me down the phone? Oh my gosh. This is me. On the phone I had it implanted. My hand is the phone. I can walk and talk because I'm on the phone, the phone inside my hand. I am the phone. This is what phones are going to be from now on. I have integrated. Thank you for your call. Subdermal implants. They charge you yourself with motion like a self-winding watch. And it's on the 22 network. I get signal across 95% of UK mainland 98 by next year. You were like phoned you it was ringing. You were ringing. That's the speaker. so small okay but when did you get this done that course in winchester i had one finger done every night i still need to use a hand so 
the subdermal implants will be there. It's like a tattooing. You don't require to do any operation at all, no surgery. If you do it, the phone will start. If you do like this, it's a number where you are trying to call it. And speakers are available as implants. So that's where the new technologies are coming in the next couple of years. So whatever physically we are using the phones, these phones is of what? No use in the next couple of years. Think about if this is the case. Today, if some murder happens, rape happens, police will come and sir, give me your phone. Now take my hand. Now think about it, how to solve these problems. We'll come to that, don't worry. That's what coming, so that is where the problems are coming. The investigation problems, remember how people are going to report in the media and all, you can think of. So now you can see that, now by seeing all this, remember, I used to think earlier, I'm very, very fortunate. Now I'm thinking, am I really fortunate? Why I'm thinking I'm a fortunate, you can see here, the global cost of cybercrime has become five trillion US dollars. Cybercrime is the third largest crime, remember, economy in the world after America and what? China. And government of India is thinking to make India as a 5 trillion economy by 2025. But the World Economic Forum is telling that cybercrime is going to touch 10 trillion US dollars by 2025. For every, remember, 11 seconds, one cyber attack is happening. That is a big problem you are facing it is more than 8 lakhs of viruses are coming and hitting the market. And Indian customers are losing more than 9,000 crores of rupees per year. Please remember, this is the public money. It is not Vijay Malaya who taken the loan and running away. No, that is not different category. It's a purely public money that is getting siphoned off. Cybercrime has become a highly organized crime. There are people who can hack and give them the member money. They will take their percentage and give the remaining ones. Try to recall, there's a bank in Pune called Cosmos Bank. Where a cyber attack has happened, the bank has lost 94 crores of rupees in 2018. Police have arrested 15 people, but they are all the normal people. We call them as mules. They went to ATM centers to took the money, but really who is the original person behind that attack, no one knows as on date. So that's why today it's a perfectly matured with a perfect supply chain management, a highly organized crime. Who is really present behind, no one knows about it. That's where I've been in this domain approximately 30 years. I'm going to classify five generations of the cyber crimes which I've seen it, and you're also seen it. The first generation of the cyber crime is way back in 1990s, when only computer systems are available with a printer and a scanner. So first varieties of the crimes have come. I took his class 10 certificate, scanned the certificate, used Adobe Photoshop software, replace his photograph with my photograph and his name with mine, take a beautiful printout and laminate. So fake currencies, fake certificates, fake identity cards, that is popularly called as nothing but what? The first generation of the cyber crimes. Second generation of the cyber crimes started when slowly computers started rolling into organization, where computers got connected and created a local area networks and wide area networks, where electricity bills, marks, etc., you know, everything has been automated. The second generation of cyber crimes started happening, it is. So then we'll see what is that second generation. It will be under. <coughs> Surprised to see how the crimes are happening. When softwares were developed properly, you can give the money to the software fellow who developed. He will write a code which is going to favor you. Let us see. A state in India has implemented for a class 10 board, you know, secondary state board means what? Class 10. Their computerization has happened. Class 10 examinations are always subject to papers. All the papers will be valued and papers will be sent to the board headquarters. A babu will sit before a computer, enters name of the student, roll number, how many marks he got it. Press the word enter, the mark sheet will come out. Class first or second class or third class, the whole will come out. So this board has purchased this software in the year 2006 and they used this software in the 2006 and 2007. Got the point? 
they got a surprising result. What is the surprising result? 2006 and 2007, these two years, the topper of that board is from private schools, but not from government schools. And no government student has got 100 out of 100 in any subjects. So teachers have got the doubt, government teachers, why my students are not getting 100 out of 100 in any of these subjects? So we ask them, how you know that your students will get? Every time class 10 results comes, last 50 years newspapers, you can take it. They are going to write one sentence. I don't know how many have seen. Private schools did better than government schools. 23 government schools are having zero percentage pass. Have you seen it, sir? So some of the government schools, what they do, they want to show very good statistics to government. They encourage the students to write on the back side of the paper the letter G. At the time of evaluation, they will identify this as a government paper and they award 100 out of 100. So teacher said, sir, we awarded 100 out of 100 to my students, but my student has not got 100 marks. So when teachers, they are telling on their own, sir, we awarded 100 marks, koi bhi government student ko 100 out of 100 marks nahi aare hai. This private management schools paid the money to the software company who developed this software so that this software will favor private schools. So what they have written? Every government student's roll number starts with three. Private student's roll number starts with what? Four. Jo software program mein de lika, if the roll number starts with three, kao ne wo? government student, greater than 68 marks, less than or equal to 100, deduct 9 marks. So, koi bhi government student 68 to 100 ka beech mein to uska 9 marks automatically cut ho jayega. If the roll number starts with 4, that is a private, greater than 68, less than 88, add what? 9 marks. Katam. So this is what software manipulations has happened. Delhi electricity board scam, etc. My electricity consumption is 2,000 rupees, his is 20 rupees. You pay the money, my bill will go him and his bill will come to me. That is very popular. Railway ticket manipulations, you are all very well about it. So if you want to go, remember, ticket, tickets are not available, pay the money to broker, he will go inside and get the ticket for you. Hope many of you might have experienced these things. These are all the various software manipulations. We have seen it, housing allotment scams. So where the minister will come and press the button, some number will come. That latter we came to know already that number is a minister's candidate, so number was kept. Koi bhi minister ke dabaya to number a So housing allotment scams, etc. So all happened here, online security scams, medical seats allotment scams. Everything, remember, is because of software what? manipulations. Suppose my son got 1400 rank in IIT JE and I'm interested in IIT JE mechanical Chennai. Let us assume I'm talking about this normal scenario. But 800 rank itself IIT Chennai mechanical is over. If I can able to manipulate the software from 700 to 1399 it shows Chennai mechanical is not available. But suddenly when it becomes 1400, Chennai Mechanical, one seat is available. You got the point? So allotment of engineering seats manipulations has happened at several locations. That is how the software manipulations are happening. So that is where the second generation, slowly when internet started coming out, fake profiles, defacing, writing nonsense things, etc., on social networking sites and all it started. Third category of the crimes, if you look at it, is where the malwares, viruses, keyloggers, and all have come into picture. They try to steal your data from your computer system. They are going to cause the damage. And of the same viruses, today they are trying to target the nuclear sectors, defense sectors, airport sectors, and all. And fifth generation, the crimes is targeted against what? IoT devices. I will go show here it is. Have you heard about something called ransomware? Ransomware is a file which comes and encrypt our whole computer system and ask ransom, give me this much amount of money in the form of a Bitcoin 
देन ओनली आई विल प्रोवाइड यूर डिक्रिप्शन कीस अदरवाइज यूर डाटा इज वॉट लॉस्ट आपने सुना होगा इट्स कॉल्ड रैनजम वेयर बट हैव यू हीड अबाउट अ रैनजम वेयर विच विल एनक्रिप्ट अवर टी वी अवेलेबल फॉर फाइव डॉलर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड फ्लॉकर एफ एल ओ सी के ई आर आई इंस्टॉल ए फ्लॉकर रैनजम वेयर इन माई मोबाइल फोन आई मेड ब्लूटूथ ऑन In my apartment, 40 TVs are having. Remember, internet connectivity. Today, every TV is a what? Smart TV. You are all watching Netflix and all, right? Now, when their Bluetooth is on, I can press some button on my mobile phone. All the 40 TVs will become blank. How much money I am spending? Five US dollars. Please remember, with five US dollars, I can make my apartment all TVs non. functional today you got a refrigerator which will get connected to internet that also you can make the refrigerator non functional software by using something called as a flocker ransomware now you can see here there is one company hope you are able to see the name of the company what is the name of the company they come out with a insulin pump every day i will check my insulin and i will take the injection but this we don't require by wearing that pump remember it automatically identifies how much insulin you require in your body it is going to push it into your body but hackers hacked that one and pushed more insulin into our body so the person has what dead now there is a app that is available by installing that app in our mobile phone you will know how many people in 200 meters area having a pacemaker and you can make that pacemaker non functional just again by using what mobile phone so today this is a new type of trends that are coming that's where the power reactors nuclear reactors all are getting impacted with what cyber attacks so please understand slowly look at who are all getting victimized you will understand it the next one if you look at is today every car is having a gps right and you might have heard about tesla has come out with a car called driverless google has also come out with something called driverless cars sit in the back side of the car inside and say i want to move towards gachboli direction the car will go driverless car you don't require to say it but today 98% of the cars are hackable you can hack that car and change the latitude and the longitude the car instead of going towards the gachboli direction will start moving towards what abid's direction and this is popularly called gps spoofing so gps signals can be intercepted and it can be spoofed so you can change the latitude and the longitude so the cars etc will go in a different directions so this is what the new trends are coming that's where you can see who are the victims of the cyber crime it is the individuals are getting victimized hope you agree it is the organizations are getting victimized because 9 lakhs viruses are coming every day into the market and for your information out of the 9 lakhs 2% of the viruses of the 9 lakhs behavior is not known it means no antivirus is in a position to what detect that one please understand this point it is similar to covid virus once it comes how we don't have a vaccine and that to covid has come once in 100 years hope you agree 1919 similar we got it in 2019 but here 2% of the 9 lakhs are coming every day whose vaccine or we call it antivirus is not at all existing it that is the biggest problem today we are facing it is organizations are bleeding remember you will not believe it nations are getting victims of this because hackers are hacking into transportation systems railway systems they are transporting to defense systems airport systems and all at the end of the day they are also using this as a purpose for money laundering activities for your information one rogue nation in the world is getting foreign exchange 8% of that country's foreign exchange is coming because of ransomware attacks what is they are doing it very simple due to lot of sanctions imposed on that country their foreign exchange reserves have come down drastically so it is asking their countrymen to hack into the other country's computer system put ransomware encrypt the data get the bitcoins sell the bitcoins get the dollars hope you know very well about it 
total number of bitcoins are what? Constant. If the demand for bitcoins increases, the price of bitcoin also what? Increases. So companies were forced to pay. For example, 10 computer systems of organizations got encrypted. They will ask you 20 bitcoins. We know today each bitcoin is how much it is running into lakhs and lakhs of rupees. That's where, if you look at it, cyber attack has become a big business today. And some countries are encouraging this as a part of the foreign exchange earners. So why this is happening? Because 96% of the people don't know how to use their digital products. Please remember here, what you know you are all using mobile phone is only 3% for your information. Right? The reason is, you don't know what operating system that present inside is doing that. You are installing a game, and what that game when you try to install, it is going to ask, I want to access your phone book, tick mark. I want to access gallery, tick mark. SMS, tick mark, tick mark, tick mark. It is taking out your whole data. I will go with two, three cases, not beyond that, because we don't have much time. So please understand this point. 96% of the people are not aware. So what's supposed to be what done on any digital product? Social networking sites, we are using left and right. Twitters, we are writing nonsenses and we are trolling the people, etc. by writing. Just remember, these are all the biggest problems today are facing it. Briefing some cases studies, I'm going to the next slides. What to do, what not to do is the most important. At the end of the thing, the word you should understand is a cyber hygiene. It is not just you. Go and tell your children, go and tell your father, mother, in-laws, etc. What is the real impact of the cyber crimes that are happening? It Today, I have seen the people sitting at home, failed in class 10, making one crore per day. You will not believe it. One crore per day, they are able to make it. You should be thankful, remember, how much knowledge they are having. Just they are using common sense, they are able to exploit our vulnerabilities. Why this is all happening? The biggest problem with the Indian mindset is, every government is going to tell you, don't reveal your OTP. You will agree? I will now never educate the people in that. I will educate the people, don't be greedy. That's why always I look at one advertisement is, I'm very happy, I don't know how many I've seen, called Lalita Jewelers advertisement. Have you seen it? What he says? Nothing is free. Nothing is free, people will say it. Please remember this point very carefully. Nothing is free on internet. Anybody is giving you something means there is something. A free mobile app of gaming is downloaded in your mobile phone. Why he is giving that app, remember, for you at free of cost? You got the point? The second once you started downloading, it is going to install something on your mobile phone and it is going to take out the data. So be careful about it. Use the electronic devices cautiously. Nothing is free is the one word. So as soon as you got up in the morning, you have to pray that God, today I should not get any free offers. So please remember that is how you are supposed to pray for it. Because our greed only, why these crimes are increasing? Even every day government says, remember, don't reveal this OTP, don't do this, etc. Forget about all that. Give only one advertisement. Don't be greedy and nothing is free. This if you remember and you tell to all the people, then people will not understand, including the game or an app or anything. If somebody gives a mobile phone, sir, take it free of cost, don't take it. I went for a conference. If somebody says, sir, you know, if you go for a conference, some brochures, companies will give, they are given a pen drive. That pen drive, when I got connected, it attacked my whole organization. Hope you remember the Iranian nuclear reactors, how it has happened. Iranian nuclear reactor, how the attack has happened? Because Iranian nuclear scientists went for a conference where the Pendrus has been given, that Pendrus got connected, attacker is able to spread it. Please remember, koi bhi electronic device, don't take it. So let me go here some points. Why this is all happening? We are all moving from apes to apps. So we are all apes basically. From apes to apps, we are moving. Our mindset has not grown. Still, we are behaving like a what? Ape. That is the biggest problem. So let me skip here. So one point I would like to say, how they are victimizing is four techniques. What is the first technique is? We call them a social engineering attacks. So engineering the attack so that the society will get damaged. That's a basic. 
One is via fishing male. Fishing male means a male which appears to be genuine, which you people who open it over. So never open any mail that has come from unknown sources. If that mail is having a link, never click on the link. If that mail is having attachment, never open that attachment. So that is popularly called phishing mail. How a fish hook we will keep it so that you will capture the fish that is called what? Phishing. Now, if at all it has come via voice, then that is called what? Wishing. I received a call, sir, I am calling from State Bank of India credit card department, a woman nicely speaks and you are going to tell everything. That is called what? Wishing. If it has come in the form of a SMS, dear customer, from tomorrow onwards, your Paytm will not work. Please click this link and update your details. And that is popularly called as what? Smishing because it is a SMS based phishing attack. Now the latest trend has come that is called what? QR issue. You go to a pub. If you want to know what was the menu, what they are doing? Scan the menu. Have you seen it, sir? Yes. Please never scan any QR codes. That is the problem we are facing, sir. So I will tell you in one case what has happened. In one metro, I don't want to tell the name. In metro train, there are people who have a monthly cards. Have you seen it? People used to go and pay the member. Their card will get activated. Now they did it automated. Don't come to the member counter. Outside the counter, there is a QR code. Just scan it. Your monthly card will get updated. A fraudster went and over that QR code, he pasted his QR code. People went, scanned. काम नहीं कर रहे ठीक है अभी क्या सर कल से अपडेट होता होगा पीपल स्कैनिंग देर रिमेम्बर व्हाट दे आर डूइंग इज जस्ट मंथ दिस मंथ ऑलरेडी अपडेटेड ठीक है आज पैसा पे करेंगे कल से काम को होता बारह लाख रुपया दो घंटे में निकाल दिया बारह पंद्रह स्टेशन में वो पिलर्स होता ना पिलर के ऊपर ओरिजिनल के ऊपर फेक दबा दिया दिस इज पॉपुलरली कॉल क्यू आर इशिंग क्यू आर इशिंग इज अ क्यू आर कोड फिशिंग अटैक we will come to that sir so again story is same don't scan qr codes which are received from unknown persons second point sometimes this qr code when you scan it it won't scan it gives a message sorry your qr score cannot being old you cannot scan it you are requested to go to this site and download the new qr code scanner Oh, you will download that one. From that time onwards, your data will go. Because when you are downloading, what is the only thing we know? Accept, 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 accept. Agree, 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 agree. That's all. You have agreed everything. So it takes SMS, it takes your mobile phones, it takes your remember gallery pictures, and everything will take it out. Now the biggest way how the viruses are coming into our mobile devices is via what? QR code. So please remember the QR code has become one of the biggest problem today. We are what? Facing it. So never scan any QR codes received from unknown places. The second QR code scanning it asks, go and download the latest version. Why, sir? I have a book, but I don't want to read it here. Third point, if you remember very, very carefully, when you are downloaded it, before you start agree, 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 what agree, agree, you can see it once or twice. Once. So this is what I would like to say as a part of that. So phishing is lottery scams. You know that you have a mail, you have a lottery for 1 lakh rupees. But you have a lottery for 1 lakh rupees. Who gives you a lottery for 1 lakh rupees? It is only our greed. And gift schemes, Ponji pyramid scheme, income tax returns. Please remember, I got a remember. You know, the fraudsters are very clever. Exactly when income tax deadline is over, 20 days later you are going to get the mails. Dear customer, your 47,000 rupees are lying in the bank, income tax returns, please click on that. They clicked on that. Tax refund. I'm going to get, remember the bank, which bank? I typed my bank as Axis Bank. It is going to ask you username and password. I gave my username and password. Instead of 47,000 got credited into my account, four lakhs have gone out of my account. So please be careful about it. These phishing mails are really one of the biggest problems. 
Second, when you are visiting an actual website also, website is original. From bottom, something will come. What is that called properly? Pop-up. Please block the pop-ups. If you don't block the pop-ups, on the original website, the fake will come. It is going to ask you some details, and you are going to give these details. This is another thing you are supposed to what? Keep it. As I already mentioned, SMSs, I told you the KVC updates, yes, remember? Uh, SBI reward points, electricity bill, etc. So, you know, the fraudsters are very clever. 15 days only, they follow one method. Last year, September, entire India people got, what is the message? Your electricity bill you have not paid. Please contact this telephone number, otherwise your electricity will get what? Cut. People contacted. That fellow said, please download a software in Google Play Store. They downloaded the software from the Google Play Store, but there is nothing but your what? Remote to desk viewer software. What the remote desk viewer software is going to do? It is going to see your entire mobile phone history. And whatever you are typing, attacker knows your OTP number, PIN number, and all, he is going to steal the message. So please remember, this has become one of the biggest problems we are facing it is. So let me skip. This is a OLX fraud. So what is the OLX fraud? Today, you know, you can sell anything on OLX. This is the one I want to sell it. Let us say my, this is my cycle. I posted on, remember, OLX. This is 1,000 rupees. Immediately, somebody is going to contact you. Sir, I'm an army officer working in Kashmir. I got transferred to Hyderabad. I'm interested to purchase your cycle. So he is going to say, I'm going to give an advance of 500 rupees. So he sends, remember, as initially, first 5 rupees he will make a transaction because he want to verify your account is correct or wrong. 5 rupees will come. Then he says, sir, I'm going to transfer you 500 rupees. He sends the 500 rupees, but that time it is going to ask you what is your PIN number. He enter the PIN number, 500 rupees will go out of your account. Then that fellow will call, sir, by mistake, software has a problem. Instead of money getting credited into your account, 500 got debited. This 500, that 500 again I'm sending. So again, 1,000 will come. This fellow will enter the, what? Pin number, 1,000 will go off. Why this is happening? When money is getting credited into your account, you don't require to enter pin number. Please understand this point. When you are making payment to someone, then you have to enter the PIN number. 60% people are not aware about this. 1,000 will become 2,000, 2,000 will become 3,000, 5,000. My own colleague who is a chartered accountant kept his son cycle for 1,000 rupees. How much he lost? 6 lakhs. 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, 4,000, 4,000, 8,000, Kaun Banega Karorpati permit type. And that fellow is able to lose what? Six lakhs of rupees. So please remember, when you are paying money to someone, you have to enter the PIN. When you are receiving the money, you don't require to enter the PIN number. So this is what I said you, something called as a QR-based fraud that is happening. It's, that's called QR issuing. Be careful about the toll-free number. I'm in Indigo tickets book but I a ticket cancel karna chate. I will go to Google and type Indigo's toll-free number. Have you seen it? Yes. The first number aata pakka fake number hai. So, koi bhi bank ka, koi bhi hai, sab remember, be careful about this point. Whenever you are visiting any website, jo bottom se advertisements aata, usko par barosa mat rakhiye. Go to the actual website of Indigo or go to the actual website of State Bank of India and look at that. That is where the toll-free number frauds are happening. Sab ek hi sochega, Google mein jake search kiya to bhout bhi lega. Milega, originally bhi milega, fake bhi milega. But first hit is always for what? Fake. Because Google ne ranking mein kya karega? Jada aapne page ko access kiya to that will come as a what? First. Ye fraudster bhi kya karega? Das aadmi ko rakhega. Bhai, tumhara duty kya hai? Wo website open karo, band karo. Open karo, band karo. Iska wajay se uska number a jata? First mein. So don't think first is the place where the actual website you are looking at. Be careful about what you are looking at. They could sell tower frauds. Loko koi kaam nahi hai. Hajar rupaya, doha jar, adha ghanta bank banana chate in India. This is the greed of our Indians. 
दैट्स वे आई वांट टू टेल ऑल द गवर्नमेंट्स एजेंसीज भाई कोई सी आदमी को ओटीपी मत दे दो ये मत दे दो ये मत दे और मत बोलो डोंट बी ग्रीडी इज एक ही एडवर्टाइजमेंट करो इससे अलावा कुछ भी नहीं जाए किसी को भी पैसा पकड़ में नहीं मिलेगा सेल टावर लोग थर्टी लैक्स ट्वेंटी लैक्स दे आर लूजिंग इट सिंगल शॉट में थर्टी लैक्स वो बोलते हैं सर आपका अपार्टमेंट को ऊपर में सेल टावर रखना चाहते हैं आपका मकान को ऊपर सेल टावर मेरा इंजीनियर आ जाता है वो इंजीनियर दो दिन के बाद आता है इंस्पेक्शन भी करता है सर इतना सेल टावर है कैलकुलेट करके आपको थर्टी लैक्स और रुपीज़ पर मंथ पे करेगा सर इसके लिए आप पहले इनिशियली जीएसटी भरना पड़ता है ये सब के पहले पाँच लाख चले जाता है पाँच लाख से आठ लाख दस लाख लाइक दैट आपको पता नहीं सर ये फ्रॉड एलोन सेल टावर में इंडिया लो हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपये लूट लिया कितना फास्ट है देखो इवनिंग 5:30 को मिनिस्टर ने अनाउंस किया फ्रॉम आज शाम साढ़े पाँच बजे से इंडिया में 5G शुरू कर रहे हैं कल सुबह लाखों कस्टमर्स ऑफ एयरटेल बी को मैसेज आया यूर मोबाइल इज 4G इट हैज टू गेट अपग्रेडेड टू व्हाट 5G प्लीज क्लिक ऑन दिस बटन खत्म पैसा चला गया मिनिस्टर से फास्ट है वो लोग वो बना के रख के भाई क्या बनाना है कैसे डूबना है क्या नंबर को बनाना सब कुछ तैयार करके रखा सो दिस इज व्हाट आई वांट टू से इट एंड सेकंड वेयर स्टूडेंट्स हियर ऑल अवेलेबल इंस्टेंट लोन एप्स कैन एनीबडी कैन टेल व्हाट इज द फ्रॉड इन्वॉल्व इन दिस केस एलोन इंस्टेंट लोन्स सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू टेक टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज लोन फ्रॉम ए बैंक मिनिमम दस बार बैंक जाना पड़ता है मिनिमम दस डॉक्यूमेंट्स जाना पड़ता है बट गूगल प्ले स्टोर में एक ऐप डाउनलोड कर दीजिए आधार कार्ड नंबर ठीक है और पैन कार्ड नंबर दे दीजिए बैंक का चेक और बैंक डिटेल्स दे दीजिए एक घंटा में आपका अकाउंट में दस हजार रुपये आ जाएगा दस हजार रुपया आपको बारह महीने पे करना पड़ता है थाउजेंड 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 रुपीज सो बारह महीने हो गया स्टिल आपका मैसेज आता बाई स्टिल यू हैव टू पे दिस मच दिस मच बोल के दस हजार लोन के लिए लोग एक लाख दो लाख तीन लाख भी पे कर दिया बाद में मैसेज आता आपका पूरा रिलेटिव को मैसेज जाता है दिस फेलो इज अ फ्रॉडस्टर आपका वाइफ का फोटोग्राफ से वो मार्फ करके कुछ भेज जाता है सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट करता है ये सब कैसे हो रहे हैं वेन यू आर डाउनलोडिंग दैट ऐप दैट ऐप इज गोइंग टू से आई एम एक्सेसिंग ओवर फोन बुक आई एम एक्सेसिंग ओवर गैलरी वो सब उसके पास है सब रिलेटिव को आपका फोटो भेज देता है आपको बदनाम करता है 65,000 करोड़ इज द मनी वेंट इनटू टू चाइनीज कंपनीज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फ्रॉड 65,000 करोड़ सर कैन यू बिलीव इट पार्लियामेंट में भी डिबेट हुआ बहुत सारे लोग सुसाइड कर दे इसके बारे में इंस्टेंट लोन है आप आप पढ़े तो पता चलता है सो हाउ दे आर ऑपरेटिंग स्टिल दिस इज ऑपरेटिंग फ्रॉम द लास्ट थ्री मंथस गो टू सी सी एस इन हैदराबाद एंड वेरीफाई समथिंग कॉल इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉड आप कुछ भी नहीं वो लिंक भेज देता है यूट्यूब का बोलता है वो लिंक ओपन करिए आपको हंड्रेड रुपीस आता है आपके अकाउंट में हंड्रेड आता है कल दो थ्री हंड्रेड होता है फोर हंड्रेड होता है फाइव हंड्रेड होता है उसके बाद बोलते हैं सर ये फाइव हंड्रेड के ऊपर अनदर फाइव हंड्रेड डाल के आप बिटकॉइन ले लीजिए पूरा पैसे चला जाता है सो बी केयरफुल अबाउट दिस इज द दिस आर ऑल द थिंग्स दैट आर हैपनिंग हिर इट इज दिस इज एस्पेशली दिस लाइड इज नॉट दिन इस्ट वन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस दो पीपल हुआ अबो फोर्टी फाइव If you receive any WhatsApp call from unknown number, please don't remember lift that video call. If you lift that video call, you can't see anything. कोई लड़की नहीं होता उधर. But after 15 minutes, कोई भी बात भी नहीं करता. Hello, hello बोलते हैं, बंद हो जाता है 10 seconds में. एक घंटे के बाद आपका मोबाइल फोन में एक वीडियो आता है. वो वीडियो में आप सेक्स कर रहे हैं, बोलके एक वीडियो रहता है. and that fellow says give me some 10000 rupees nahi to aap sab relatives ko barnaam karega ye karega internet bhi dal dega especially they are all targeting the people who go 45 please remember sir because humko video call aaye to pehle at least wo aadmi ka dp aata na wo dp mein acha lady photo aata hai basically above 45 may get attracted very easily so my sincere request for all of you is don't lift Correct, sir. Hundred percent, sir. We have seen it actually. I am telling you, people are coming and telling. Eighty lakhs people are paying for this. You will not believe because हमारे को बच्चे society में हम लोग जीना है. This is the type of thing we are having in mind. That's where they are encashing it. 
So please be careful about this is called something called what? Sextortion type of cases, etc. So let me skip, sir. We don't have money. So I will skip all this. Second is USB chargers. Kabi bhi USB charging of free man mat kare. Airport mein ab jake laga re. No. They are called jock juicing. Usse aapka data nikalta hai. So when you want to connect that USB alone, shut down your mobile phone, then you connect it. Or connect including along with what? The whole socket of power, but not only just the cable wire. Are you getting the point? That cable wires which you are connecting directly, aapka data uska andar chile ja rahe hai. That is again keylogger type. So my sincere request is be aware, remember, the USB devices are really causing a very, very what? Big problem here. So let me go here, sir, the last two minutes, we don't have. Social networking, mein, don't keep any of your details, family details, telephone numbers, etc. And stalking, harassing the people, that's called cyber stalking. So victims already we told, what is the need of the hour? This is one I would like to say, the very, very important as a need of the hour, personal hygiene is important. Like how you are really taking care of yourself personally when the COVID came in the same manner. When you are working before internet or any, what to do, what should not be done, you should be very clear about it. So be careful when you are clicking on the links and never click any links that has come from unknown sources. Never do banking transactions in the public Wi-Fi. You have been to the airport for 45 minutes. So immediately on. Whenever you switch on that Wi-Fi free, Please look at the data, what they are, they are going to tell you. Data will go in plain text. Whenever you are visiting any website where you are giving your username and password, please look at it is HTTPS. It is not HTTP. S must be there. If S is there, the data is going to get what? Encrypted. And keep always your passwords as a very, very long and lengthy passwords. That's very, very important. Right? And these some more things that is available. Facebook, you have to lock it, remember. Never make any friendship with unknown persons, etc. So given regularly update our antivirus system, regularly update our operating systems and all. Organizations also have to be very careful. People ask me, sir, can you connect the pen drive? Disable all USB devices. Because viruses are going to spread from what? Pen drives. Disable all the USB devices. What website should be visited, what website should not be visited, you clearly identify it because the attackers are coming and from one organization they are going to what? Another organization. So these are the, some of the things. But so let me stop at this stage. If you are having any questions, I am more than happy to answer because the weakest link in all cybersecurity is, is the human being. Please remember technology alone cannot stop the attacks. Only human being can able to stop. There's the weakest link and the strongest link of the entire cyber security is nothing but what? Human being. Educate the others and tell them what to do, what should not be done. So these are the things I would like to say. If you are having, remember, any doubt, I'm more than happy. Because cyber security, the world, is not just you alone. You and I should work. Then only we can become what? 100% safe and what? Secure. Thank you very much.